Are you sick of those damn political crusaders? The anti-libertarian libertarian party? Sick of the violence and coercion that makes up the status servile society with seemingly no escape? Are you looking for real practical solutions to increase your personal freedom and your invulnerability to coercion? If so, kick off your shoes, come inside the polyethylene A tent, and let's talk Vanu. Join your hosts, Shane and Kyle, as they further explore this freedom strategy and develop it into the modern day. You're listening to the Vanu Podcast. And welcome to the Bonu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm Shane and... I'm Jason. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Bonu. There are obviously a bunch of great titles on there, but I'd recommend going mobile, a terrific Vanu and Van Life scene from the 1960s narrated by yours truly. It features some incredible articles by Rayo and tons of great insight from those living Vanu uh, back in the uh, 1960s, 70s, and maybe a little bit even in, into the 80s. Uh, again, that link is audibletrial.com forward slash Vanu, and uh, that does uh, help support this podcast. Uh, we do thank Audible for uh, for helping us out with there, help helping us out uh, with an affiliate there. So joining me once again is Jason Booth. Uh, welcome back, man. Uh, we are we are live on DLive right now. Uh, it's, I'm getting more, the, more in the routine of doing this because uh, for, for the longest time, uh, never did anything live, but uh, I, I I enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, how's it going, man? Uh, I love this live stuff, man. This is this is a lot of fun. You know, you and I we do like once a week or so. We may, meet maybe once every ten days, and and we do the the recorded show, and it's just you and I. But um, I don't, there, there's something about the live. It's just it, it's more spontaneous, and and there's less editing, so like there's less work for you. But yes, um, no doubt. It's just, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's just you and I hanging out. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it, it definitely is. And as far as the editing, I'm not sure if uh, folks have noticed, but uh, I used to actually listen to the entire, re-listen to the entire podcast and, you know, edit things out. But I stopped doing that because it takes a lot of time. If it's, an, if it's an hour and a half podcast, it takes like another two hours to do editing if I do it that way. So I don't have time for that. And, uh, you know, it sounds more organic that way, I think. So uh, ho- hopefully you guys are, are, are digging that. Uh, I guess one other note, uh, if you're there on D DLive, uh, go ahead and feel free to uh, chat, upvote, share, this, uh, share the uh, live stream around. We certainly do appreciate it. And uh, also, I guess I should note, uh, again, because I d- did a, an episode of Liberty Inter Attack Radio a couple of days ago, uh, live, not on D2, not on D2, or uh, not on uh, DLive, because uh, I was, uh, you know, interviewing a Bitcoin maximalist. I wanted to, you know, respect him. Uh, but not, not really. That wasn't really why. I just figured do it over there. But, um, but yeah, so so the this is actually going to be another early access because uh, I'm currently in the process of transferring, uh, you know, trans, I guess uh, transferring website hosts, and it's taken a little time because the LUA site, the LibertyUnderAttack.com, that website is about 35 gigabytes of data, and it's taken them a little bit to get everything uh, uploaded and, and transitioned. <laughs> So you can thank the Political Prisoners Archive and the court documents, or actually the, the Political Prisoners Archive, the Profiling Archive, and uh, I guess those those various archives for the sheer size <laughs> of such a, such a website. So um, <laughs> thankfully, though, he's doing me a favor. It would be, it would cost me a lot of money. Um, like it would cost me quite a bit of money um, to to host 35 gigabytes of data. And if I was going to stick with my current, or if I was going to go with the other plan, not this guy, um, I would have had to find a place to host like 25 gigabytes of that data so it, w- it would have turned into a mess this guy's doing me a favor it's taking a little time um so this will be early access the websites won't be updated probably until the beginning of next week uh so uh yeah early access and i i, I feel bad not putting out content so um yeah we're gonna do live streams in the meantime uh and you know even when we get the podcast back up and running we'll we'll continue to do live streams because it's fun and we uh, we like interacting with folks and it's uh, just a different sort of atmosphere so um i guess uh what's what's new with you man uh and anything uh to report no not really still freaking melted i'm not going to complain about the heat because you're in texas but uh it's hot for me it's hot for me and i don't enjoy it but uh um other than that no it's just 
Same old, same old. Different day. Yeah, I'd actually, I don't actually know how hot it is outside because uh, I started my work from home job last Monday. And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy, easy job. It's basically technical support and, I guess, you know, client services sort of stuff. Uh, it's just basically a call, like, a call, like a call center job only at home, um, which is fine with me. I really don't care. I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome not having to go anywhere when I wake up. I'm saving a lot of money on food because I was typically too lazy to, you know, make my food beforehand. So I have, <laughs> I have an hour lunch. So I, you know, I, I, I get off, I, I get off my, my, I, I get off work. And then I, you know, go make myself lunch, and then I come in here and watch, uh, you know, some sort of YouTube video for the, the entirety of my lunch break. And then I stay sitting at my desk, and I just continue doing what I was doing before. So it's it's uh, really really awesome. And this is a location independent job. So in regards to Vanu, um, yes, I mean that's what I've been looking for. And I mean this isn't a temporary one like the other one I was looking at. So um, this is uh, definitely definitely a major positive. Not having to deal with the state of surveillance society, not having to deal with Austin traffic, and as you said, not having to deal with uh, you know the Austin heat. Which I don't even, like I said, I don't even know how hot it is outside. I'm sitting here in my in air conditioned <laughs> apartment with my fan on, and you know life's good. Life's good. But uh, I guess yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say that like in, in addition to all that, like what people don't understand about working at home versus you know having to travel for work, like. The commute takes time. Like getting ready takes time, right? And and it's something that you do every single morning, and it gets so mundane, and you like it. It contributes to burnout like as much as the job does. Oh yeah. So like working from home, like you don't have to fucking wear pants. <laughs> you don't have to put on your shoes. You don't got to you know you don't got to put on that 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 nice button up shirt and all that other stuff. Um, and it's just it's it's so much. I want to. I, I want to say it's it's refreshing. It's refreshing to to be able to do something that you enjoy in a in in a way that you're comfortable doing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is. I mean, I, I I I don't not enjoy it, but I don't. It's just an, it's just an easy job, and I get to be you know where I'm most comfortable. Um, and yeah, you're you're exactly right. So all of the other uh, you know time consuming aspects that go into uh, you know not working at home. Uh, so. I mean, yeah, there, there's a lot of benefits. And I mean, be, beyond that, see, I mentioned the location and independent part, but I can work from anywhere as long as I reside in a state where I'm allowed to, you know, I'm allowed to work for them. So they're obviously only, only licensed, I guess is the correct word, in a certain number uh-huh. of states. Um, like for Calif- for California, they don't let their workers work from Cal- California because taxes are fucking ridiculous. Um, so they, they, yeah. used, they used to allow you I to, they used, they used to allow you to, you know, travel there and work but apparently it's so draconian there that they don't even let people do that anymore but like for for me i could travel around and work from anywhere um so it's uh it's it's yeah. it's pretty neat it's uh definitely pretty neat so yeah i guess that's that that covers that i, I wanted to provide an update on my book as well vanu a strategy for self-liberation which you can pre-order right now by visiting libertyunderattack.com forward slash vanu book um, it's taken a little longer than I, than I hoped. Uh, I ordered the proof, uh, for my book, you know, the, uh, the test copy, I guess is another way to put it, uh, from create space two weeks ago and apparently is returned to sender. So it'll be another week or so before I can completely finish up proofreading and formatting. Um, so I, I'm going to get the book and reread it all the way through, which only takes, only take me a couple few hours. Um, but I got to make sure all the formatting is correct, that the cover looks good on there. Um, so yeah, it's taken longer. But uh, it's it, it's coming though. Uh, it's it's definitely coming. And uh, I, in my opinion, obviously in my opinion, I'm a little biased. Uh, it's worth it's worth the wait. And uh, the whole self publishing thing. Yeah, uh, I I read it. <laughs> I read it. It's worth it. Yeah. So well, I appreciate that. So yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's 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 coming. LibertyUnderAttack.com forward slash Bonnie book. If you want to get it now, I did. Uh, I, it was it, it did go out on Kindle on the eighth. I think it was uh, uh, out on the Amazon Kindle on the eighth. But I took it down. There were no orders for it yet. Um, but I took it down because the formatting. I it looked fine whenever I previewed it. Um, in their Kindle Create little app. Oh. Uh-huh. But I looked at the um, I looked at it. Uh, in the preview on Amazon, and it looked like shit. So I was like, well, nobody's ordered it yet. Ah. Time to strip it down. So it's all good. It's all good. No orders there anyways. People want the hard copy, and I like that. Uh, that's 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 my preference as well. So um, I guess um, I don't really have anything else for small talk. To, what about you, man? Go get hashtag Agora also. Yes. While you're, at sh- while you're buying Shane's book. Yes, and you can get the hashtag Agora shirt, which, uh, as you can see, I am uh, I am uh, 
wearing that right now. So, <laughs> Mine, mine's in the, in the dirty clothes basket. I'm not digging it out. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's uh, definitely okay. So um, I guess before we get into the main subject, which uh, is homeschooling and unschooling and uh, homeschooling, unschooling, and Banu, uh, I want to provide you with some feedback I received from a listener regarding his testing of the Dark Android project, uh, Brian Sovereign's uh, uh, you know, creation. Uh, that uh, we, we had him on probably a month and a half ago to talk about that and also mesh networking. So if you missed that episode of the Crypto Anarchism series, it was fantastic. I myself listened to it like three times because I was on a road trip, you know, after that. Just so good I had to keep you listening to it. Brian's awesome. Um, but uh, we're going to talk, uh, uh, I guess uh, I'll show you uh, some feedback uh, regarding the Dark Android project. Uh, and if you're interested in doing this, I mean, his advice will be valuable. So uh, let's cover that real quick. And I did get permission. I'm not going to reveal who it is, uh, but I did get permission to share um, this feedback. So if you send me an email with feedback, I will ask you openly before I ever read it on air because privacy and all that sort of stuff. So <clears throat> so he says, uh, I want to drop you a quick line after listening to this week's Vaughn podcast to tell you about my experiences with Brian's Dark Android book. Many of these things I was familiar with, such as the use of Signal, but there is a lot I got out of it and was able to use. The first was use of the K9 mail app versus uh, the Gmail app, along with a third-party email address, which I paid about $30 a year for, LavaBit. But I'm sure K9 can be used with other addresses. But as you know, my goal was to get away from Gmail and only use it for junk mail, mail mailing lists, etc. So I'll stop there for a moment and just say, so what are you talking about the K9 mail app? That's how you get pretty good privacy, uh, PGP for email, um, on your phone. Um, now, I haven't been able to test this out myself because I don't have an Android yet. Um, I will be getting one at some point in the near future because I want to have a private phone. I'll have my, my spy phone and my private phone. Uh, i got to keep these, <laughs> these two things separate. Um, but yes, uh, so K9, uh, K9, uh, K9 Mail is very good for PGP. I will make a comment, though. Um, I, I mentioned this to him. I don't remember what he said back to it, but... As far as the thirty dollars a year, there's no reason to pay for it. There are free, uh, there are free, um, you know, privacy geared emails out there that you can use. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, I, I understand why he uh, why he went for Lava Bits. Um, they were, I think this was this would have been probably five years ago or something. Um, they um, got a subpoena from. I think the federal government, and instead of releasing that information, they just closed their doors. Um, so they recently, I think, uh, reopened, and uh, I think uh, things are working a lot better there now. So um, that is uh, an option. So I'll get back to the email here. The second great thing was the hacker's keyboard, which I downloaded from Google Play, but still would like to use Efteroid for apps. The big worry I had was that Gboard, uh, <coughs> that Gboard, I guess the Google board, does record and save keystrokes, which, which, uh, which kind of makes any encrypted texting apps weaker. Yes, it does. Uh, but you'll notice mm -hmm. my spelling sucks because there's no predictive text in the keyboard space bar is right next to the period. So that's one piece of feedback. Brian did mention the, the hacker's keyboard. And it's supposed to be, uh, I guess, uh, as he said, the, the Google board, the Google, Google Play keyboard, I guess. Um, or mm -hmm. the, just the Android keyboard. Yeah, it, it records keystrokes and all of that. So this was a yeah. uh, an innovation that's, uh, you know, the hacker's keyboard where there's no keystroking or anything like that, uh, no tracking of keystrokes, apparently. There's got to be a little trust there to ensure that they're not doing that. But, um, you know, a lot of people trust it, and uh, I guess the downside is if you've gotten used to, you know, like your spy phone or your Android phone, um, and uh, you've gotten used to autocorrect and predictive text and things, not a feature. Um, not a feature. So... I think that's uh, beneficial, though, at least in one regard. Oh, yeah. right? it's 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 a it's a fair trade off. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely agree. I would definitely agree. So uh, back to the email here. Uh, I also tested the open PGP key ring with my nephew. This is pretty awesome. The downside is you'll need to meet the person, meet in person, and scan the QR on the receiver's phone. Then you're good. Um, we are using PGP via email and also encrypting files to share them in Signal. I think you may even be able to send received with an unverified public key, but obviously not recommended. This is a great app and great way to put PGP in place. So um, that that be I guess so so uh, canine uh, canine mail would be for encrypting emails. And I guess you can, you can use Open PGP Keyring. I think these things work in concert. Uh, you can use Open PGP Keyring to encrypt files and then send them through, as he said, Signal. So that's really really awesome. Glad that works. Um, he mentioned that he uses DuckDuckGo now uh, as the default search engine. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and uh, I guess one kind of downside of his, uh, his security setup that he mentioned was uh, he still uses the single hop uh, private internet internet access VPN, and it works okay, but uh, he's noticed it tries to run through a Washington, D.C. server, so he selects one that's outside of the USSA. So uh, he did comment that the VPN drains the battery a little quicker than usual, um, but not that not that big of a deal um but he did mention that he used tor on the phone and uh it does drain the battery considerably as uh, i think brian and i both said uh in that uh and that's uh episode i guess a couple months ago so um 
I guess to, to, to close this out real quick, he says, uh, but yeah, even though I completely changed permissions on the microphone and location services, I realize they still have the ability to track. Yeah, probably. Uh, disabling everything, including maps, is, uh, including maps tracking is good. I just find another way, uh, just using a paper map or something. It's better than having this stuff tracked. Yeah, it might be a pain in the ass, but I can put up with these slight inconveniences. Yes, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of uh, for more for increased security. You got to give up a little comfort for increased freedom. Some of that uh, comfort as to uh, some of it. Um, as we talked about before, uh, technological innovations do help that sacrifice be uh, more minimal than it was in the past, but um, still s definitely some sacrifices. Uh, he mentions a Faraday bag that he picked up on Amazon for $10 uh, that you can put, you can slide your phone in there. Um, mm -hmm. Cheap, uh, very cheap. And I, I think Brian said he could just wrap your phone in aluminum foil too uh, if you want to go for an extremely cheap route. So <laughs> um, I guess that's, that's, that's basically it. So I guess uh, just just generally to review the uh, the the encryption, uh, the PGP uh, encryption, uh, you know the K9 and the open key open PGP key ring work well, uh, work well in concert as he said, and um, it's it's going well for him. Obviously it's not perfect yet, but uh, you know these things take a little time. They take some experience. They take uh, uh, t some time to get used to. Uh, because uh, if you use an iPhone for 10 years and you go to something like an Android without predictive text and um, without uh, Google Maps and those sorts of things, I'm sure that can uh, that can be a challenge. So uh, thank you so much to uh, XYZ for the email. Uh, certainly, certainly appreciate that feedback. And if any of you have tr tested out any of these things we, we talk about in, uh, in here in the Vonu podcast, please do share that information with us. Uh, we will keep you uh, keep you anonymous, and uh, we won't uh, you know obviously reveal any any private information. So um, thanks. For that information and uh, i guess let's uh, go ahead and get into it unless you have uh, any comments on that jason uh i just wanted to say that the dark android the the link that you sent me particularly um it's just it's, it's really hard on the eyes you guys so just <laughs> be be forewarned before you go there it's it's a black background with like white and bright green and, and dark blue writing and it's just Had fun, huh? yeah <laughs> yeah it's not it's not fun at all but uh lots of good information there if you guys go check out the website um you know, I'm. I, you know, I'll post it on the, uh, the, the, Vanu podcast Facebook page under the post about this, um, about this, uh, this podcast. That will work. That will work. And yeah, I, Brian mentioned that. I think um, at the end of that, uh, in the, at the end of that episode, he's he's phasing that out, um, and he's moved over to I think zog.email, which is the main hub for for a lot of his stuff. Or most of his stuff, if not all of it. So, um, yeah, he hasn't done anything with that for a while. You probably get a security warning because the uh, the SSL yeah, certificate I, expired like I got a year and a half ago or something. So, <laughs> it's not it's it's not gonna hack your it's not gonna hack your browser or anything. It's just uh, mm -hmm. it's just another security feature. So, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and, and, and get onto it here. So today we're going to do another intermission episode. We've got another few episodes to go in our crypto anarchism series, but I figured we tackle another subject today. This episode is titled Homeschooling, Unschooling, and Vanu. We're going to cover a couple articles by Ray on the subject. We're going to cover uh, cover some quotes on public education found in various Vanu publications. We're going to discuss the reaction from those in the Servile Society towards homeschoolers and unschoolers. And by the end of the show, you'll understand why keeping children out of government schools is a necessity uh, for a Vanuan family. If you're an anarchist, you already understand why, but I think Rayo and other Vanuans have some important perspective uh, some important perspectives to add. So, Jace, anything, uh, anything uh, I guess, introdu any other introductory material before we get into it? Uh, I, I, I didn't do a whole lot on this, but uh, I did look up and I found that only 3% of people homeschool, um, which was a disappointingly low number for me. What was that percentage again? Three, three percent, about three percent of, of kids uh, between kindergarten and, and and 12th grade, you know, like five to 17, only about three percent of them are, are homeschooled. Huh. Cause I, I, when I wrote about this, um, oh, I think it was an actually direct action, the path of freedom, the uh, the book that spawned the Vani book. Um, I think I looked into that and I think homeschooling is actually increasing quite a bit percentage wise. But I guess it might have mm -hmm. just been a really small percentage beforehand. So, huh? Well, I mean, three three percent of what like sixty five million people or or whatever the number was. So, I mean, three three percent of that is is relatively low. So, I mean, even even a great increase in that is still not going to be a, a a very large percentage. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is upsetting. That's a, that is upsetting. Yeah, at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess hopefully through uh, podcasts like uh, like this one. 
uh, more people can, uh, you know, be convinced of the necessity of uh, pulling kids out of uh, government indoctrination camps. So hopefully uh, this uh, this episode will, will, will help you do that uh, as well. So the first uh, article I want to cover is uh, one by Rayo out of Volnu Life, March 1973. And I guess the first uh, four of, or so of these ex- excerpt, excerpts will be out of um, that same publication, Volnu Life, March 1973. But uh, this one's called Teaching Reading at Home, A Simply Unique Way by Rayo. And this was one of the very few times, I mean, the, it, there were various times throughout publications where he mentioned children, but they were, it was always in passing. So this mm-hmm. is really one of the only articles where he actually goes kind of uh, in depth, because he didn't have children when he, was, uh, when he was writing, at least, before he disappeared. So um, I guess uh, this is kind of the best we have uh, fr- from Rayo, and uh, certainly, certainly unique. So I'm not going to read this entire thing, because um, it's, uh, a lot of this isn't conducive for an audio podcast. But uh, I'll read a little bit of it for you uh, to give you an idea. Uh, idea. Uh, but just to, to preface this, what he's talking about is something called the initial teaching alphabet. And the idea behind this, I'll go ahead and open it up uh, so I can uh, read a little bit to you. One moment here. I'm doing things live. Can't cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have the outline open either. <laughs> so, um, all right, the initial teaching alphabet is a variant of the Latin uh, alphabet developed by Sir James Pittman um, in the early 1960s. It was not intended to be a strictly phonetic transcription of English sounds or a spelling reform for English as such, but instead a practical simplified si- uh, simplified writing system which could be used to teach English-speaking children to read more easily than can be done with traditional orthography. After children had learned to read using ITA, they would eventually move on to learn standard English spelling. Although it achieved a certain degree of popularity in the 1960s, it has fallen into disuse. Um, so when Ray was writing about this in 1973, this was probably right near the tail end of, 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 this, uh, of the popularity of this, of this uh, teaching style. So let's get into it here. Uh, he says, quote, conventional, write, conventional written English is difficult to learn because most words are not spelled like they sound. Examples, the same letter A stands for different sounds in father, baby, cat, what, and all. And the same sound is spelled differently in ski, be, beat, as in like be root, uh, beast, money, baby, either, and peace. Chaotic spelling may only may be only a nuisance for an adult who recognizes most words by overall shapes, but it's cruel. It's a cruel handicap for for young children trying to sound out, or for a, for a young child trying to sound out words. A six-year-old recognizes several thousand spoken words. If words are spelled like they sound, he could read and write uh, their entire vocabulary as soon as uh, he learned the alphabet. As it is learning by phonetic methods, a child must memorize hundreds of rules and myriad exceptions. Learning by look and say. E must, learn ver- uh, e-, e must learn every word separately. It's not surprising that long, dreary years are spent learning to read and that most people never read easily or well. One way to reduce the drudgery is to first learn in a special phonetic alphabet using books printed in that, using books printed in that alphabet. Transition to the regular alphabet occurs only after a child is able to recognize most words by their overall shapes. Um, so I'll skip forward a little here. He goes into a bunch of different examples. There was uh, I want to get to... Um, so this is the, the teaching style, but the, the most important part of this article is the reason that Rayo finds this is a, a valuable way to um, teach, uh, why, why it has special relevance to Vanu. Uh, he, says that, um, he says that this may be the quickest and easiest way for a child to learn to read at home. The parent must spend some time learning, uh, learning, but fr- uh, learning VP, which I think it's visual phonetics or something like that. I, for, I didn't mm-hmm. look up the, the, uh, the acronym that I put in, that he uses here, um, but using this, this learning style. Uh, the parent must spend some time learning, but from there on, the process is easy. Uh, other advantages. It provides a natural filter for young children against the flood of bias and rationality on TV and radio, which can come not only directly, but secondhand from playmates. At the same time, it reduces the barrier to printed words. Thus, reading will be relatively easier, whereas listening to a news broadcast or the gossip of outsiders will be more difficult. There is much greater fr- uh, freedom choice in written matter than on radio and TV, and this method takes advantage of this. Censorship of books and periodicals is almost impossible. Even in Russia, there is uh, Samzadat, underground newsletters, whereas censorship of broadcasting is easy. Good point. Um, Also serves as a filter going the other way. An outsider cannot easily interrogate a small child. Even after a child learns it, uh, it remains useful as a as a within the family code when among strangers. If spoken rapidly, it is as, as incomprehensible for outsiders as Pig Latin. But unlike Pig Latin, which has a very distinctive sound, this method sounds like a heavy foreign accent and is more acceptable. 
So, uh, okay, it's Visionetic Pronunciation is what the, the acronym there is. Um, let's see here. So uh, he says that it's not a fully tested system. My only experience teaching young children to read was before uh, visual, uh, v- Visionetic Pronunciation. Um, I don't see, I don't foresee major problems, but I can't guarantee there won't be any. If you are first to test it and get good results, you may be, be able to write and sell instruction manuals. So um, I guess we'll kind of end there. So the, the idea here is that Rayo was looking into alternatives, you know, looking at different ways to, to teach children and to make them more uh, invulnerable to the, ir- the irrationality uh, that can be found within the state of survival society. And um, it's, it's a very interesting approach. I mean, I, I hadn't heard of that. I mean, I actually added when I was doing the transcription for that, I was like, what is he talking about? So I did some Googling and I found <laughs> out, oh, the initial teaching alphabet. Let me, l- let me do a little research on this. And it's like, oh, okay. So it kind of, you know, um, kind of fallen out of, uh, fallen out of use. Okay. Interesting. So basically that's, that's really the only, only thing that's uh, real talks about when it came to teaching. And, uh, that is, uh, that's even, I'd, I'd say even more, a little, even more radical than just homeschooling and unschooling because it's teaching your children, t- it's teaching your child to read in a completely different way, um, with these, with these barriers, uh, you know, built up against the survival society. But, uh, what do you think initially, man? Uh, I love it. I, I love the, the idea of, teaching a child differently than, than, than what coercive schooling teaches, you know, as, as we know, there's, there's really like seven different basic ways that people learn. So, so not every, not every child learns the same way, just as you would learn differently than I would learn. Um, so having a, a, a method that is, that is outside of that is, is kind of revolutionary, but it, it's, it's also, you got you got to kind of worry about it a little bit, you know. Is he, is he going to learn differently than than these other kids? Is 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 whatever else? But um, I like it, and 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 the the line about teaching the kid to do it so that um, when you're around strangers, so it sounds like a heavy accent instead of like, you know, like like pig Latin, which has the the the, the familiarity to it. Sure. Um, that's that's a, that's again that's 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 another piece of like security culture. So I mean, there's, it's kind of kind of like a, a twofold with this. You're, you're educating, and you're, you're you're teaching them security culture. Right, right. And I actually just interviewed. Uh, this was a couple of days ago. Interviewed J. W. Weatherman, who was uh, he he taught uh-huh. in college for a while, and he uh, uh, you know he he's I guess he, he taught math and computer programming and such. And uh, he was talking about all the ways that public schools, you know, government indoctrination camps make it so difficult for people to learn math. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, by going through clocks and, you know, very like three or four number systems um, within, you know, like the, when they first get into school, like they have to remember, uh, and I'm going to badly, you know, paraphrase this, but you're learning clocks, which, uh, you know, they only go to 12 or they go to 12 and then they reset and go around again. You have AM and PM. Then you have, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the child learning, you know, addition and subtraction. And, you know, that's done in the, that, uh, you know, the 10 number system, I think is what it's called. And then uh, you have them trying to remember, you know, how many feet are in a mile and, and all that. Like, it's just confusing as all hell for a child growing up. And I would, I would think it's probably, probably pretty similar when it comes to, uh, to reading. I, I, I can guarantee they, mm-hmm. don't, they don't teach children to read the most efficient, uh, the most efficient way. So, uh, I mean, if, if it's po- – I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I know quite a few parents that unschool and homeschool, but I really haven't talked to many of them. I wonder if there's um, – you know, I, I, I'd, I'd be interested in getting some feedback from folks – on you know how how these children are are, are learning are, are learning to to read. Um, I don't know. You've you've got some some more insight on, on some folks. You got any ideas? Um, as as I, I, Jeremy Jeremy uh, Hen Geller and I have talked about this, and, and he's mentioned it a few times on his shows. Um, and and that's how, how how it was with us is is kids are naturally curious, and and, and, and if they want to do something, encourage them to do it, and then that's how they learn is is through. Through being curious and 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 passion and, and desire, um, when you when you sit a kid down in a classroom and you say you have to do this for the next forty five minutes, right? Okay, now now we're gonna we're gonna switch over. Now you have to do this for the next thirty five minutes or or whatever else. Um, it you're, you're you're stifling them. You're stifling their creativity. You're stifling their imagination by by forcing them into this box that they have to do. So. Um, by allowing them to to explore and learn on their own, um, it it not it not only they not only will they will they educate themselves better because they're 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 hungry for for the education they're hungry for the information, um, but they're they're passionate about it and they're doing what they love and and, and they're happy. That's that's the big thing. They're they're happy with what they're doing. 
and and a person that is happy and enjoying themselves is going to learn a lot more than a person that's shoved into a box and said you have to do this. Yeah, yeah, I would I would, I would definitely agree. That'd be one one major driver is just uh, you know the the child following their own interests. Um, that that's mm-hmm. big, and I, I don't know. I mean, may, maybe maybe something like this. Uh, I, I guess maybe maybe a teaching style like this would be outside the range of unschooling, because as far as I understand unschooling, it's ba- the, the most you really do to direct your child your ch- child's education is um, you strate- strategically place things that might interest them around the house. Is all that I've really heard. Mm-hmm. And then if they find it interesting and pick it up and start reading it, then you know they might become interested. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I I think this might even be a little too essentially planned for for unschoolers. But uh, I don't know. What do you think? I think I I do not count that as as unschooling. That would be homeschooling. Um, at at best, it would be homeschooling. But unschooling, no, because again, you're 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 kind of forcing them to do it. Whereas unschooling is is kid driven. Sure. What Rayo's doing is here is parental driven. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So uh, if you guys are interested in reading that in its entirety, just go to uh, vonniepodcast.com forward slash vl as in Victor. Laura, fawnypodcast.com forward slash VL, and uh, you can download Bonnie Life March 1973 uh, for free. So this next one is uh, just a short little, uh, I guess a short little piece, again, uh, actually right after uh, the, the previous article, um, how to stay out of public schools. Um, so uh, here we go. This one's uh, rather short. Quote, advice from people who have done it boils down to don't register a child or start them in state schools. Don't get on their records. Instead, I find a freeish private school and let them learn at home. If, uh, if E is already in state school, check by phone with district superintendent to find out what forms, if any, are required to remove a child. Do not give your real name when checking. Obtain any forms. Stop going to state school. Send the school a note or form if required by mail saying either you are moving to another state or that you're enrolling the child in, in a private school. Keep the child off the streets during school hours. If you must mm-hmm. go somewhere with the child during school hours and are questioned, say the child has a dental appointment or something. Have stories all prepared and practiced. Have mobile or rented living quarters. Be prepared to move if the neighbors show suspicion. This probably won't work if you live in a small town where gossip travels fast. Either live in or around a big city or far out in the woods. Don't self-righteously tell off the school bludge. And don't spend your precious precious life trying to reform the public schools. That's trying to fight them by their own rules. In slavery, reform is still slavery. Instead, always tell the man what he wants to hear. Then go do what you want to do. End quote. So some interesting suggestions. Uh, now... I know for a fact, I, and my mom actually did this, sent a letter to the uh, to the principal and I think the superintendent when she was me from public school back when I was uh, mm-hmm. 17, like six months away from getting my uh, my high school degree, high, high school diploma. But uh, yeah, I know that's that's typically the procedure now, and it does vary by state. We did an episode uh, during the direct action series on homeschooling uh, over on Liberty Intertech Radio, and it really does vary by state. Some states are very draconian. They, make, they require you to... They, they require someone to check on you like every month or two to make sure the child is getting taught the, cur- the proper curriculum. Some states just have you in, in your letter, you write that you're going to teach them the five subjects they require, and then they, le- they fuck off and leave you alone. Um, and it's just and obviously, I guess, a wide spectrum in between. So um, that does kind of depend. But um, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think so far about uh, this little short little piece? Uh, it, it's, it's a little conspiracy minded. Um, <laughs> it, it's. Like even even by today's standards, this is, this is pretty conspiracy minded. I, in the seventies, it would be even even more conspiracy minded. Um, homeschooling, I believe that homeschooling was a lot more accepted back in in, in the nineteen seventies and nineteen sixties when when Rhea was doing this stuff um, than it is now. I think I think now it's the more people have heard of it um, due due to social media and whatnot, but. Uh, I think that a lot more people were doing it in the '70s because of the 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 mentality of people was different. Uh, the 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 indoctrination was not as bad, especially with 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 the hippie movement and 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 post Vietnam and and all that other stuff. The the mentality of people was different than it is, you know, 2018. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so a little, little, little far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> be prepared to move if your neighbors show suspicion. It's homeschooling. That's all you got to say. Oh, yeah, my kids are homeschooled, right? I mean, you don't got to say my kids are homeschooled. Oh, but they're not in a cult or, or anything like that, right? You just got to say my kids are homeschooled. You know, you don't you don't got to be that conspiracy-minded. My kids are homeschooled. Uh, they, they do do things during, during like, quote, normal school hours. They, they do have 
places that they go, they go to the library, they, they, whatever else they take, they take trips with, with their, with the homeschool group and, and whatnot. Um, so they just say, yeah, we're homeschooled. It, yeah. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. No. Yeah, but I mean, when you consider Rayo, though, you can't really be surprised, right? Uh, I mean, I I, I uh, no. have the same the same conception of the Serval Society that he does or that he did, and uh, mm-hmm. I mean, you kind of you know tr- trust no one is kind of kind of what he went off of, and uh, if if you kind of look at the behavior of the Serval Society, um, you know, I guess the I guess the 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 excesses, so to speak, the 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 really negative parts. Um, yeah. You know, I I. I, I <laughs> I don't know. Better safe than sorry. I mean, maybe he's going a little overboard, but uh, I mean, there, there have been there have been you know at least a handful of articles I've seen over the past couple of years where, and maybe it's more of an isolated thing, and it kind of varies state to state, I'd, I'd imagine. But um, where you know children are taken from their parents because you know they were they were homeschooled or like you know, I guess the 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 most the, the worst one was an off grid family that homes homeschooled their children, and uh, you know a, I guess a nosy neighbor called the bludgies on them. So um, I, I think you know just just the act of being homeschooled alone well, that is probably isn't good. Well, that yeah, they they weren't removed because of the homeschooling. I mean, there there has to be other issues there. It, it it certainly wasn't become just because they were homeschooled. Um. And and. Uh, <sighs> Like really, really okay. Let, the the reason we're doing this podcast, you guys, is 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 because it it, it was kind of in the forefront of my mind, and, and I suggested it after my friend or our friend, uh, Dirica, posted a letter, um, that she wrote to to the school district taking her son, out of out of public schooling, um, and and uh, it was picked up by a, uh, uh a homeschooling Facebook page called. The honest teacher, right? The the honest teacher, the honest teacher picked it up, uh, and there were people commenting, like defending, defending the the indoctrination of the public schooling, and and, and how if 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 her son doesn't go to public school, he won't be well adjusted, he won't do this, he won't do that, blah 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 blah. Like if that's not proof of the indoctrination that she's trying to get her kids away from, then I don't, I don't know what else, you know, like. Like that, there there was one comment about a guy saying like he needs to go to school so he can become a productive member of society. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what the public schools decided <laughs> like, to churn out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and that's, see and that's see that totally. and see that's that's why I, I I kind of lean more towards Rayo here. Maybe it's a little extreme, but if you look at w- whether it's alternative lifestyles, whether it's alternative mm-hmm. education for your children. The, the reaction from the Cervell Society is, is very, very hostile a lot of times. And, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't trust these people not to call the bludgies. I mean, if you're doing something that they don't like or that they don't approve of, well, what are they going to do? They're going to, they're going to call, de- call mommy or daddy and tell them that, you know, uh, <laughs> Susie stole her lunch. Um, I mean, that's what they're going to do. Um, well, so it, 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 it's, 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 again, it's, it, it's risk versus reward. This is something we talked about before, uh, you know, how much – how much freedom do you want to have versus versus how much risk are are, are you willing to occur? Um, I mean, pe- people call. I mean, we've we've seen the stories. I mean, people call the cops on on the people having a barbecue in a park. You know, uh, the, the the girls, the little girls selling lemonade. The 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 kids in Denver selling lemonade that the cops came and shut down. I mean, there was <laughs> so people it people people have a huge appeal to authority issue. And 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 they will they will call the cops on on pretty much everything. There was a guy that called the cops because a kid was cutting his lawn. Like he 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 went over the imaginary line that was between the two houses, and and started cutting the guy's grass by accident. Yeah. And the guy called the cops instead of just saying, "Hey, why are you why are you doing this?" So I I can I can understand that. Yeah, they 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 it, it is possible. It is possible that that someone will call the the cops or or, or CPS or or anything like that, but uh, the reality of someone calling the cops just because you have homeschooled kids, no. I, I, I if if you have unruly homeschooled kids, if you have dirty and 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 kids that are wearing you know tattered dirty clothing and 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 that that are rude and 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 have bad hair and and all this stuff, like th- then I can see an issue. But if, if for someone just homeschooling or or for unschooling their kids i i don't i don't really see that 
I, <laughs> I, I, I can, I can understand. Like obviously, in many of the situations I've seen, there were other, uh, other extenuating circumstances. Mm. But at the same time, man, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't trust these motherfuckers. Um, I really don't. And I, I mean, especially if someone is, uh, you know, an outspoken enemy of the state, like, a, like a, an anarchist. Um, you know, this gives them a, a, well, yeah, a and, they, again, and they and they can make they can make up mm-hmm. whatever excuse they want to. Oh, you know, the children aren't getting a proper education, and, and I mean, what 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 ex- mm-hmm. like what? How much of a reason do does CPS need to take your children? I mean, I obviously I think it varies oh, very very state very, to state, very little, but it's very very, very little. Bl- so very little. So and they'll it, lie, and they'll lie to take your kids too. Yeah. So so it, it really it really just hinges upon. And as Venuans, with I guess our perspective on the servile society, it really requires uh, at least uh, some sort of trust um, in the people you surround yourself with, whether voluntarily or involuntarily. Such a, like you know, what I mean by that is, um, if it's mm-hmm. an, if it's, a, if it's an intentional community, then you surround yourself people voluntarily with folks that you trust and you're like minded and all. Um, now, if you move into Should, a subdivision. Yeah. Um, and you can't choose who you really live next to. Like I guess you can't. You can move, but for the sake of argument, let's say you can't. You can't choose the people you you live next to. It requires some sort of trust in in your neighbors that they, that they aren't going to, that they aren't going to snitch. And I mean maybe 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 we're I guess uh, you know going too deep down this rabbit hole. But but man, as as I don't know. I kind of lean more towards I kind of lean lean more towards radio here. But then again, I, I don't have I don't necessarily mm-hmm. have, I don't have children so. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and when, and when, you, when def- you look at when you look at and sorry, when you look at other things too, like like um, uh, like many of the van nomads who have reported on YouTube that uh, you know they've you know stealth camp somewhere or they just park somewhere and you know go inside a grocery store and they come out with their window smashed because someone found like someone you know guessed they were living in there or something. You know those dirty those dirty homeless people. Um, <sighs> I mean, yeah. I, there's there's I, really there's really no I mean hell these people call 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 the cops on children operating lemonade stands because they don't have the proper permits so I, I mean there there uh, really is no level of low for these people you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying yeah I I understand I understand what you're saying completely and and I think it, again it goes back to risk versus reward you know how much how how much how much are you willing to risk for your freedom or, or for, for a degree of freedom. I mean, and you're going to go, you know, full troglodyte and, and raise your kids in a cave in order to escape all of this, <laughs> you know, I mean, I think, right. And, and, and I, I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying don't do it. I'm just raising, I'm just raising concerns that, that the uh-huh. should have. So I'm not saying you know, don't do it because, oh, for sure. Reasons, there's, but I'm there's, just there's, raising there's concerns. definitely, yeah, I just I, I think I think now in 2018 that there's there's more acceptance of homeschooling and 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 unschooling than there is than 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 there was and and you know 19 the 1970s when I wrote this. Fair enough, and that 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 that, that very well might be the case. That very, very well might be the case. But uh, let's get on to some some other quotes here uh, on the importance of keeping kids out of government schools. And uh, this one is uh, was just a letter sent to uh, Vanu Link. Uh, which was an old publication. I think it only had a couple issues, maybe maybe more than that. Maybe I'm getting confused with another one. But uh, basically, it was uh, a private newsletter um, where Venuans could connect privately. So um, I think, unless that was a different one, I don't. I get confused with all of these volumes, man. Sorry. Um, so, anyways, the the <laughs> quote is: uh, even if the kid did decide he wanted a government education certificate, he could at least in Vancouver, British Columbia, get a high school diploma starting from zero in about three years if he is over twenty five or so. That's a hell of a lot better than twelve years of boredom and bullshit, slavery and servitude, stagnancy, and formal uh, and uh, formal education doesn't really mean as much as, as much in society as I thought it did though learning does the public school system is just a gra- uh, just a great big concentration camp for kids as anyone knows who can see the fences and watch them marching in mass um, end quote so I like it yeah that's that's a very very uh, blunt way to put it yeah it's a mass big concentration <laughs> camp for kids uh, it it absolutely is, and that's one of the reasons that my kids are not in public schooling. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, because uh, because of, of the indoctrination, and and their mother and I both have, we'll call them freedom oriented philosophies. Um, and and we don't want our kids to be a part of that indoctrination. We want our kids to have free minds and and to be able to actually think for themselves instead of just regurgitating what what's taught in the indoctrination system 
Um, yeah. And and one of the other options, in, instead of doing like like an adult school or things like this, um, I mean, three years, three years if he was over twenty five years old. I mean, even for for a, a burger flipping job, you're not gonna get a de- you're not gonna get a job at twenty five years old without a diploma. Um, or at least a you, GED. You can't, yeah, that's that was that's what I was gonna get to is is you you can do GEDs. You can do you can you can walk in off the street and and take the take a GED test and 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 get your get your GED right then and there. Um, it costs a little bit of money and and it won't take it won't take three years. Yeah, I don't know. Do do they even check? Do they even check um, your like? I guess probably at, probably up to a certain age they might. But like if you've got to, like if you've got an associate's degree, do they even check? Um, to see if you've, or even if you don't have an associate's degree, do they even check to see if you have a high school? Do they even like? Does that come up in the background check or something? Like, cause you just bullshit and say you have a GED. Um, I don't know. I've never been in a, in a hiring position, so I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Uh, no, I, I actually, I have, I have a GED. Um, and then that went towards the credits that I already had, and that gave me a diploma. But uh, I do have a GED, and then, and then I went on to get my associates. Um, and I, it, it, it has, it has never come up. Yeah. Like I've, I've, I've never, I've never had to show anyone that piece of paper. I don't even, I don't even know if I still have that piece of paper anymore. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where mine is. So, I mean, you probably just, oh. you probably just bullshit it, but I do. Yeah, don't say, don't take my word for that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think after, after you get up to a certain age and you, you don't come off as a moron, they probably don't, you know, really inquire too much about your, your piece of magic piece of paper from you as, you're from ages, you know, I guess from years K to 12. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe some experiments need to be done. I, I don't know. But, uh, anyways, this next quote, uh, obviously a school that makes active children sit at desks studying mostly useless subjects is a bad school. It is a good school only for those who believe in such a school for those uncreative citizens who want docile, uncreative children and quote, Paul Goodman compulsory miseducation. And I need to see mm-hmm. if I can find that actually, if that's still out there, probably not. But, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Uh, you know, yeah. So for so for Venuans, I mean, yeah, the idea is uh, <laughs> critically thinking, problem solving children, and um, yeah, that's not what they uh, they get fed at uh, government schools. So I like that quote. What do you think? Uh, I love that quote. Um, you know, it that that's that's what it is. I mean, I think it was a uh, um, a George Carlin said that 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 they. That they don't want educated people. They want they want dumb people that are just smart enough to push the buttons and and to do mm-hmm. the do the simple tasks, um, and and that's what it is. It, it, like compulsory education is is a box, right? And 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 your your kid when they're when they're when they're young and and uh, they're just like the, the, this beautiful blob of energy, and and they compulsory education is like it's like shoving them into in, in, into a funnel, and they they come out the other side just like this dried out piece of indoctrinated beef jerky and it's just there, there's no imagination there there's no creativity there so yeah yeah that's uh yeah that's that's definitely true that is uh definitely true so this next one uh, is actually by rayo uh, uh quote i and probably you were heavily indoctrinated during our early years not only by state schools but by attitudes expressed by parents and playmates and even more by having to live as a, as, a, as virtual slaves most people rationalize <sighs> that whatever uh most people rationalize that whatever seems unavoidable is really for the best, end quote. So that's uh, that last part. Yeah, that's, most people rationalize that whatever seems unavoidable is really for the best. So you can't you, you you can't avoid taxes, therefore it's probably for the best. You can't avoid government indoctrination, therefore you know it's probably for the best. You know the government wouldn't force us to do this if it wasn't for the best. And uh, <laughs> you know that is that is kind of the mindset. You know, as I kind of made the comparison a mo- like uh, a little bit ago when you're talking about you know. Um, uh, you know, the, the state of survival society, individuals within, uh, you know, calling the bludgies on homeschoolers. Well, I mean, it's it's that same sort of um, it's that, that that same sort of mindset. I mean, you know, um, so, you know, these children go through government schools and, you know, they're, you know, I guess uh, <coughs> they answer to their parents at that time. And then once they get of age, well, you know, their, their parents are still there, but they've got to find that. Uh, I think I think this is something that's um, oh, gosh, was it Ben? Was it Ben? I don't know where, where they have to have their next father figure, and that next father figure is the state. Mm. So whenever whenever the uh, whenever they see something they don't like, well, you know they they call daddy, they call government, and uh, yep, 
yeah, it's, a, it's, it's you, you, if you can't avoid it as a child, uh, if your parents don't let you avoid something as a child, it's probably for the best. And I think that same rationality, as Rosario says here, is, is applied to uh, the state as well, uh, you, know, dra- you know, vastly across this revolt society. So anything there? <sighs> no, I, I can't. I can't argue with that at all. Um, yeah, when 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 you're when you're brought up in a system that is de- dependent on on the daddy figure, on the mommy figure, on on listen to X, listen to Y, listen to Z, sit down, shut up, be quiet, do as you're told. When that X Y Z is is no longer there, you know, as as you know, graduating high school. Um, you look for another X, Y, Z to follow. And that's, that's, you know, daddy government and, and the nanny state and, and all this other BS that are the reason we can't have freedom. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So we've got just uh, a couple, a couple other quotes here left. Uh, yeah. Uh, so quote, the relative sameness of humans today is due in large part to coercive institutions of the recent past. Just as a one-crop farmer depends on uniformity of plans, so an authoritarian system depends on uniformity of people. A state can control only to the extent that people act and react in similar ways. It is no accident that the strongest motive for compulsory tax-supported school in the U.S. a century ago, when they were imposed, was not better education, literacy was already substantial and, far and fast-rising, but destruction of minority cultures through forced association and indoctrination of children. Yep, quote. yep, yep. yep. Um, let me jump on this one real quick. Uh, the the Native Americans, the the Indian schools, um, the the Catholic and and the the boarding schools that they would send the Native American children to. Uh, this is only like a hundred years ago, you guys, that they would send the Native American children to. It was not to educate them. It was to to kill their culture. Yeah, to, assimilation. To, to uh, yeah, assimilation uh, exactly is what it was. They they wanted to uh, indoctrinate them into the white system, as opposed to them growing up and and learning their Native American roots and, and Native American culture. Um, and they've done this. They've done this again and again and again and again with with, with different minorities and and whatnot. But that's what school is. I mean, school is not, or I I I, I got to call it schooling because it's not education. Schooling and education are entirely different things. Um, but s- schooling, schooling is not to make your kids smart. It's, it's not to give them a positive future or anything like that. It is, it is to make them a robot, you know, a, 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 a literal paper doll. You know, that's, that's why they're, they're, they're taught the same thing. They, they go through the same tests. They, they, they get the same, they get the same grades that it's, it's, it uses indoctrination, it uses peer pressure. It uses propaganda, um, and it, it uses it uses repetitiveness to to breed out your your kids creativity and their and their imaginations and 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 it 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 yeah robots man robots yep yep and you know these <laughs> no surprise these kids uh, you know graduate from uh, from high school or uh, higher level indoctrination and uh, what's the the first uh, instinct to do well is to worship the state because that's what they've always been taught mm-hmm. so um you know there there are a lot of uh there are a lot of i guess branches of this tree of evil um or i guess uh i guess yeah that there are a lot of branches of this tree of evil but uh when it comes to the the machinations you know continuing this continuing the state uh there's no better system than public schooling than public indoctrination love- <laughs> there's none there's none I, look! Look! Look at look at how public schooling portrays Abraham Lincoln, right? I mean, yeah, they, dude, they, dude, he, dude is a, a dude was an outright racist. <laughs> fuck it, a, a, a racist and and a tyrant and and just this in, huge freaking authoritarian figure. But they said he he freed the slaves. Well, no, he didn't. The the Emancipation Proclamation. Shouldn't have counted because the southern states seceded. Number one, number two, slaves. The North still had slaves for like another three years. So I, <laughs> this is, I mean, and th- this was a system that was already on the out. It was already going away naturally through through market demands. Right, and that's and, that's and that's another just, that's that just real that's real briefly that's another argument against secession because the South did try to secede and what the fuck happened? A fucking war. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for uh, those inner yeah. secessionists Sorry. out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, this so, is side, side, side note, side note. Let's get back on track. But yep. Uh, 
Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So the last quote we have here, uh, quote, with rare exceptions, ed- educators have been apologists, adapters, and rationalizers of the particular status quo in which they lived and operated. If we had liberty in education, if parents felt free to set up their own schools or teach children at home, we would have a condition where the best would win. People would choose which schools to send their children to. There would be a choice between different opinions about how and what to teach. This involves competition and education, end quote. And that's something that the state hates, uh, you know, for, for, for the most valuable things, and even for... You know, just, I guess, many minuscule things like, uh, you know, delivering certified mail. You know, you can't compete with a monopoly. Uh, you legally cannot compete. And uh, when it comes to actual oh. educate, when it comes to actual schools, uh, even a lot of these private schools, I mean, they, they, there's, there's, you're basically just paying, you're paying, you know, a lot more money for them to get generally the same education. You might get a little religious bent if you're Catholic or something like that, but they're not getting that different of an education. Now, there are some private schools, I will, I, there are some private schools that pump out some really, really, Hyper intelligent individuals, like I will say that. Mm-hmm. But generally speaking, for the average individual in the Cervell society, uh, sending your kid to a private school probably isn't going to make that much of a difference, unless it's something like, uh, oh, what are those? Um, oh gosh, I can't remember what the those really they're really small schools. Um, I, there's used to be one by my Char- house. Charter schools? Not charter schools. It's a, I guess it's a different. No. Um, I don't know what it is. But there there are there are I guess a couple few alternatives out there. But as far as private private schools versus public schools, mm-hmm. as they're conceived of. Uh, normally conceived of not really that much of a difference so um there really isn't competition in education um <laughs> uh at least or c- competition in schooling rather uh to be be mm-hmm. correct with well, our, our terms here yeah uh even 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 in the case of of a private school it still has government standards that 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 it has to meet that that students have to meet uh, so uh, uh, there, there really is no such thing as a private school. It's just it's it's not a public school, right? I mean, it, it's it's still under government contract. It's like it's like calling it a, a, a private prison. Well, no, it, it's still under government contract. It's still under government rules and, and, and regulation and, and bureaucracy, and it has certain things that it has to do and can't do. Um, so yeah, it, it's really no different. Uh, and 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 as we know through through economics. Uh, competition is good. Competition breeds a better product at a lower price. So when you have competition in in the market, right, um, you, 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 your your goods get better, your services get faster. Right? I mean, look at look at Lyft and and Uber versus the taxi, right? I mean, what you Uber and Lyft they have they have they have a better product. They get there faster and they're cheaper. With with education, education should be the same way. Um, if, if you have a competition, you could get, you would be able to have better schools that would cost less money if you get the government out of the way. Um, right. Even, I, if, I, even just toss like even going to like the more expensive homeschooling route where you buy like a couple of thousand dollars in books, uh, I uh-huh. mean, compared to, c- compared to the cost of, I don't even, I don't even remember off the top of my head how much it costs per child to go through like K through 12, but it's an exorbitant amount of money. Um, mm-hmm. There's even if you go it's the more lot. expensive homeschooling route, uh, there's no way it's going to cost near as much as it does for, uh, for 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 for, for uh, you know the public indoctrination camps. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, you know I'm I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Um, and and you look at uh, you know the <laughs> since the Department of Education was 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 uh, you know I guess uh, instituted back in I think 1979 or 1980, uh, the United States went from like number one in education down to like 17th or 18th. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. um, you know, what's what's the solution? That's that's what, what are the two the only two solutions offered uh, for, you know, fixing this educate <laughs> for fixing a schooling crisis? Well, the two solutions are one school vouchers, which is just not even worth talking about. And then there's, you know, just pumping, you know, pumping more and more money into these schools, hoping that, you know, that will work out better even though that's been tried many times in the past and it's led to the same results so um i mean th- those those are the only two the only two solutions you can discuss in you know polite society is well you know i'm for school vouchers oh that's that's really nice well, i want to i want to homeschool my child eh, well okay that's that's a little much but uh hey, what do you got uh more government is never the answer to issues created because of government yeah i i, I that's 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 the end argument you know you know the, the these people <sighs> Throwing throwing more money at the issue, like let's let's reform, let's let's reform education. That's another catchphrase that they like to use. Well, it, all you're doing is like shifting pieces on the board, and you're not changing the game. The game is broken. The game doesn't work. 
in terms of education, right? It's 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 the exact game that the government wants, but it's not the exact it's 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 not the good game for 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 actual true education. Right. Public public schooling sucks, y'all. It absolutely sucks, and and I I honestly believe that public schooling is one of the most detrimental things that you can do uh, for your child. And it is also one of the most detrimental things that has ever happened to, to our freedom and liberty. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And even for those, even for those children who, you know, don't get all of the creativity and, and the, the, the passion for mm-hmm. learning beaten out of them, I guess, you know, not physically beaten out of them, but or I guess, uh, you, you know what I mean? You know, mentally beaten out of them. Um, even the ones that, you know, still have that, uh, you know, they'll get recommended to, you know, get on, uh, on, on, uh, legal methamphetamine, uh, you know, otherwise yeah. known as, uh, ADHD medications. So yeah, uh, your, 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 your five-year-old won't sit still for 45 minutes. Let's put him on a freaking narcotic. Yeah. That's, that's the answer guys. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, if I had to pin like the the two the two institutions of the state that are most detrimental, um, it would probably be uh, government indoctrination camps and war. Um, those would be mm-hmm. the two that I'd have to choose. And obviously, I, taxation's a big one because those things can't be, be funded if everyone if you know majority of people are agorists. But um, as far as uh, you know, what's the most detrimental to you know? I guess. Um, a human being mentally and physically. I mean, uh, you know, government indoctrination and literally being bombed is, is not really a, you know, those aren't ways to, to, to foster a healthy human being, healthy and intelligent human being. So that's, uh, that's all I've got. Uh, that's all I've got in this outline, man. Uh, Any closing thoughts? Uh, go read John Taylor Gatto's, uh, dumbing down America or dumbing us down. I think it's called. Yes. Um, it, it, it is available out there on, on a free PDF. I, I do have a link to it. Message me and I'll send it to you. Um, I also found a PDF of the book that you mentioned earlier, uh, Compulsory Miseducation by oh, Paul really? Goodman. Oh, you found it. I, I did find a PDF of that. I don't know if it's the whole book, but I believe it is. Um, so, yeah. I, so, John Taylor Gatto, dummy does, dummy does Down. Uh, and I did find compulsory miseducation, and um, I'll just I'll, I'll post both the links on the Facebook post of of this podcast. Um, Good deal. And, and in addition to the to the dark Android link that I already posted. All right, very good, very good. And I'd recommend just go listen to the School Sucks podcast. That's a, another, that too. another very good outlet. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Brett may or may not be coming on LUA in the near future sometime, so I'll just toss that out there. But um, anyways, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's all we have for you. This podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook and 30-day free trial at audible tri- or, yeah, audibletrial.com forward slash Bonu. There are obviously a bunch of great titles on there, but I'd recommend, as I said in the beginning, Going Mobile, a terrific venue and van life scene from the 1960s, narrated by yours truly. Uh, some incredible articles by Ray, and you can learn directly from those who were living uh, Vanu lifestyles. Again, that link is audibletrial.com forward slash Vanu. doesn't cost you anything to sign up, and it does help to support uh, this podcast. Also, keep in mind, my book, Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, is available for pre-order. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu book to reserve your copy today. And one other note on Patreon, we hit our first funding goal. Uh, so that Woo-hoo! means that uh, there are going to be some custom t- uh, Vani podcast stickers going out to, uh, I guess, our eight patrons on there now. Uh, so uh, if you want to, uh, you know, get in on some uh, some exclusive stickers, if you want to get a bunch of a uh, bunch of exclusive content, you want to get early digital access to my book, among a bunch of other things, I'm probably forgetting. Uh, just go to patreon.com forward slash Vani uh, and uh, you know sign up for uh, two dollars a month, five dollars a month, ten dollars a month, or, or whatever whatever you think uh, this this content uh, is worth. Uh, we certainly certainly do appreciate it. And for those on D Live, uh, please do uh, consider upvoting and uh, restreaming and sharing this uh, this live stream around. Hopefully the uh, all the technical stuff was working out fine. I was looking down at uh, open broadcast and it looked like there were some drop frames, which isn't good. I, I kind of upped it a little bit because the quality wasn't uh, as good as I'd like and uh, and some of these live streams. So hopefully it came through all right. Uh, I was checking back on it and it looked like it was doing fine and I didn't get any uh, any complaints about it uh, you know in the, in the chat or any messages. So um, that's all we have for you. The website is vonnypodcast.com. We will talk soon. Peace.